Grumble, grumble. Hey everyone, it's the Grumpy Meeple, and I am coming back at you with the final video in my coverage of Flying Frogs Dice Fest 2022. And this is going to be the best and worst things about this Dice Fest. So I thought that this might be useful for people who are considering attending maybe in the future. And um, just as being a first time attendee myself, I, I thought it'd be useful to get a kind of fresh perspective on the convention and, and what I thought about it. We're gonna start out with the events that they had running during the convention. So they had a lot of just really fun, really simple stuff going on that my son and I really enjoyed participating in. They had a scavenger hunt that was super simple. They had just basically posted some little riddles or questions about Shadows of Brimstone throughout the convention hall, like taped to walls, and you just had to find them and then, you know, respond to them. So it was like kind of a little bit of a test of your like basic knowledge of the game. And once you were done and you had the sheet completely filled out, you took it to the front desk and you got a couple of promo cards for it. So me and my son really had a lot of fun running around doing this and it just gave you a reason to go into each of the, the rooms that were holding events. Whereas maybe we wouldn't have wandered into the game library if uh, we didn't suspect that there might be a clue in there. So I think it was a good idea and it was pretty well implemented for being so kind of simple. Something that was not so simple but was still very, very cool was the Brimstone Shootout event. This was basically a series of conference rooms that were interconnected to form a Nerf shooting gallery where you had you know, your Nerf guns and an unlimited supply of ammo and you were shooting at targets that were brimstone themed and trying to score points to get promo cards. Uh, we had a blast with this, obviously. I had my seven-year-old son with me, so he quite enjoyed the the nerf aspect of it. And it was really cool because some of the targets were, they were very like elaborately done in terms of being representations of the various monsters and such from Shadows of Brimstone. And uh, it all went really smoothly. It didn't, you know, it didn't take forever. There wasn't a huge line for it. So really enjoyed that as well. And then finally, in terms of events, the paint and take system was something that my son really enjoyed. I enjoyed it as well because it was right in the same room as the like conference, you know, like the, the panels. And so I was actually able to leave my son at the paint and take um, and then just walk 10 feet and watch the panel that was, that was on at the time. So that was great. They were super friendly and helpful there and they were they were really welcoming to to Grumpy Jr. And the whole thing was just a blast. And, and he really gained a new appreciation for painting miniatures, I think, coming out of that event. Next up, of course, is the store. Um, they just had so much stuff. Like, everything you could have ever imagined in terms of brimstone content, touch of evil, etc., and so forth. The the staff, and this goes for the entire convention, um, the staff was just really fantastic. They were universally welcoming and helpful. They were very flexible with me because, you know, I had my son with me pulling on my arm. I'm trying to shop. I'm trying to remember out of the literally hundreds of expansions for Shadows of Brimstone, which ones I have already purchased. And I screwed it up and I bought a bunch of stuff that I already had and I had to take it back. And they were super, super uh, understanding about that and, and willing to, to work with me so that I could bring home stuff that I didn't already own. 
another thing coming out of the store that was very cool was the um, the thermal plastic miniatures. I've had a chance to work with them now to assemble them and do my really lazy painting style on them and they're great. The detail is amazing. They are brittle. They feel like they're weaker in some ways even than the resin. So you do have to be careful. I, I recall I was clipping just the base off for the Bandito and just a huge chunk of the actual base snapped off when I was clipping the sprue. So you gotta be careful with it, but the detail's incredible. And I was lucky enough to have one of the Hill brothers walk me through exactly kind of what the production process was for those thermal miniatures, which is very interesting because it's done in-house and it actually doesn't generate any waste because when they have miscasts and such, they just throw them into a pot and melt them and, and then make more miniatures with it. So lower waste, um, made in the USA, I suppose you could say. And then he proceeded to walk me through the store and kind of show me which of the sets that they had on display were actually in, contained the thermal miniatures. And so I was able to pick up some sets that I've never given a shot to before, like the individual kind of um, boss miniature sets like the Vampire Lord and such. Um, I just, I didn't like their resin at all and I wasn't willing to deal with it basically to get those extra miniatures. Whereas with the thermal, I'm very willing to deal with it and they look great. And so that was that was another really cool thing. And obviously getting to talk to Scott Hill was um, pretty amazing as well. Because he's my favorite of the brothers. Sorry, Jason. He's the funny one as far as I'm concerned. Jason's funny too, but <laughs> Scott's hilarious. So it was enjoyable talking to him. The saloon, the Brimstone Saloon was another highlight of the experience. Again, incredibly friendly, chatty, patient. You know, my son is sitting there bouncing off the walls because he's had 10 glasses of root beer and, and they just couldn't have been nicer. And the, the root beer was unbelievable. It was two different types of local root beer, I believe. One of them was like a licorice kind of flavored and the other was more of like just a standard like buttery root beer. And they were both delicious, and I despise black licorice, but I still really enjoyed this root beer. Um, the staff was amazing. They were dressed up. It was very cool. The saloon girl was awesome. She spent a lot of time chatting with us and and making us feel welcome and whatnot. And just the construction of it as well, you know, because they built this whole bar and all the tables and everything, and they brought it in with them. It wasn't a pre-existing structure in the hotel so and it was really well built like it looked like it could have just been sitting there for a hundred years so very very cool the the brimstone saloon was a was a highlight for sure and then obviously the gameplay sessions that i was able to take part in the three boards are just incredible i've raved on and on about those in various videos that i posted coming out of dice fest uh, but they truly are spectacular. The Giant Space Hulk and Assault on Hoth were awesome. I didn't get to play either of them, but just the visual impact of them was amazing. The Space Hulk in particular blew me away because each of the actual little tile pieces was just like beautifully made. I don't know how this guy does it, but he took the, the tiles from the game and it's just like he just blew them up by 400% and somehow laminated them onto this wood, you know, that he custom cut to perfectly fit. Uh, but they were gorgeous. And then um, obviously getting to see the, the previews of the Shadows of Brimstone Adventures content was fantastic as well. I got to play as the Viking Berserker, got to fight against a fire giant, got to fight against a Tredaran tank. So lots of fun and memorable gaming experiences to be had at the Dice Fest 2022. 
Okay, now we're going to move into the worst of Dice Fest. This is the Grumpy Meeple, obviously, so you knew there was going to be a worst. <laughs> um, and, you know, the first thing, I don't think it's it has anything to do with Flying Frog. It's not under their control, but Jesus H. Christ has the Bellevue Hilton never heard of air conditioning. The weather out there while I was there was hot garbage. And that is, again, not <laughs> Jason Hill's fault. But it was like 85 degrees. The, the part of the state is on fire right now or was at the time. So the air quality was horrible. And the convention center was just like boiling hot. Now I get it. There's a million people in there. And there's only, maybe there's only so much the AC can do. But boy, it made it pretty uncomfortable to be standing there and playing a game for two hours and then come out of it like dripping sweat. So bring some fans or something next year, I guess, or just beg those, the, the management at the hotel to, to drop it to frigid because it, it was kind of, the environment was kind of miserable. Next up, the, the, the keynote presentation, whatever you want to call it, the, the, the main talk about Shadows of Brimstone um, sucked. There's just there's no other way to to say it. They seemed completely unprepared. There was no you know like in the past they've they've done these talks that were you know they're like an hour and a half long. They live stream them or they throw a video of it up on Facebook. They've got product right there that they're showing you preview content. They're talking specifically about future plans and and so forth. And there just was none of that at the at the panel that I attended at Dice Fest, and it it just seemed like they ran out of time, and they didn't want to cancel the panel, um, but they didn't really have anything to say to the point where they were like literally like pulling people out of the audience and saying like, "Where are you from? What like what's your favorite thing about Dice Fest?" You know, which I mean, great, it's touchy feely or whatever, but. I think there's a reason you don't see any videos of, of that content floating around on YouTube because it wasn't worth taping. <laughs> um, virtually nothing was revealed. So that was a bummer. I would like to see them put their backs into that next year. Like they had a projector there, they were setting it up and I was like, oh boy, we're gonna see some stuff. Nothing, they didn't even turn it on. It must have been for the, a following um, presentation. And so that was a major bummer because it was one of the things I was most looking forward to. So uh, I'd love to see Flying Frog kick it up a notch in that department going forward. The white boxes. So I bought all of the new white box content at Dice Fest 2022 and I had problems with mine. If I recall correctly, my Targa Seeker drones, it didn't, they didn't have the cards with them. And I've, since then, I've seen reports from other people who, who have gotten incomplete sets sent to them. And so I think that this is an issue that they need to, they need a little bit more quality control on their releases that they're, that they're putting out during the convention. I get it. Running a convention is an incredible logistical challenge, but you can't sell people stuff that's incomplete. And it would have been especially frustrating being an attendee of the convention if I hadn't just happened to open that box and 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 do an unboxing of it at the convention. I would have gone home and not been able to use the product that I purchased at the convention, which would have been very frustrating. So like to see some more quality control around that so so that people aren't kind of souring their experience by getting home and realizing, oh, I flew a thousand miles and I came back with broken shit that I can't use. Um, and then the other thing that really pissed me off, they were giving out a lot of promos at the convention and that's great, but they had the Rifle Bandits promo which was exclusive to the online store. And they were not giving it out with physical purchases at the convention. And that to me is just a slap in the face. 
I get it. You want to do something for the people who can't attend the convention. You want it to be special for them. But you also want it to be special for the people who flew halfway across the country to to come to this thing. And um, it almost made me feel like I was pressured to make an online purchase while I was literally standing in the physical store. And that's just bullshit. Um, next year, they should come out with a really cool promo, $100 or more purchase gets it to you and give it to everybody who makes a goddamn purchase, whether they're physically there, they're in the freaking metaverse, or, <laughs> you know, they're a thousand miles away. Um, because I don't like feeling like I got screwed out of something because I spent the time and money to attend the conference physically. So that's, that's it. That's all I had. Overall, again, it was... An amazing time. I highly recommend it if you're a big fan of Shadows of Brimstone. I couldn't have had more fun. My son had fun. Seattle seems like a cool location for it. And Bellevue um, was great. It was easy to get to. And the the actual convention hall itself was amazing. Like I couldn't believe how much space they had kind of taken up in this in the 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 Hilton. And uh, everything felt very kind of spread out it wasn't crowded and it was just kind of like a chill relaxed place to play brimstone and hang out with other other fans of the game so highly recommended hope you enjoyed this video in in all the content that i made around dice fest this year i'm hoping to go back next year so you might be seeing more of this in the future